Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art Release really Today I will guide you in a beautiful, colorful uh, practice inspired by the spring. So we're going to draw and color some flowers and leaves and we are going to do it in uh, like on the journal or on a mixed media piece of paper and we're going to create a beautiful pattern um, that hopefully will help you to exercise and train your fine model skills, get better and better in tracing a very good quality of lines, creating a right color pattern palette for your pieces. Uh, you will need a pencil for drawing and a razor and then uh, any brand of markers that you have available. I will use the alcohol based dual tip markers if you have the dual tip. So if you want to invest some money and buy, you can find a very affordable brand online on Amazon or on stores such as Hobby Lobby, Michaels and more. And they are very easy to use because you have uh, the thin tip that will allow you to go very precisely into smaller design and corners and then the bigger tip which uh, uh, makes our coloring much faster and easier. During the practice I will use uh, specific colors but I invite you to use your own color palette, uh, follow your own instinct and your own uh, artistic creativity and needs. I just wish uh, this practice will um, give you the opportunity to find the uh, always new ideas that you can stretch and you can change and you can develop even further. So I, you can practice with my video more than one time and just changing a few details. So changing the media or changing the colors. I just want you to build a habit to make art part of your daily life at least twice per week. So you can find a nice, beautiful mental and physical space for you to refocus, reset, recharge of beautiful energy and learn what mindfulness it really is. And art is definitely a huge support for that. I'm going to switch the camera. All the medias are listed in the description box. So make sure that you read that, pause the video and then get ready to practice with me or you can watch the video practice on your own time and convenience. Please consider to subscribe to my channel if you like the content that I'm proposing and uh, uh, spread the words, like my video and if you have any question, leave it in comment. I will do my best to answer you. I'm going to switch the camera and then we'll see you again at the end of the practice. Okay. Here we are. We are going to first create a beautiful frame. You can use the ruler if you need to do so. Otherwise, it just goes low and this square, this frame doesn't have to be perfect. We are doing a freehand pattern. We are going to work on the use of space and we're going to create a beautiful floral patterns like flowers and um, leaves. We're going to kind of divide this squared space into smaller square space. We can do two lines in vertical, two lines horizontal. Then we're going to kind of reframe inside each one of these smaller spaces goes low and if you prefer to do the design first with a pencil as I told you other practices that we did together you can do pencil first and then you will just have to go over the design with the extra fine black markers Just for like a matter of time, I don't want to make the video too long so more people will have the opportunity and the time to practice. I'm doing directly with the marker, but if you feel more comfortable with the pencil first, you do the pencil and then you do the outlines. I'm going to really dedicate this pattern to the nature and Mother Earth. She's a mother to us all. And uh, I really am inspired by the season, like uh, the spring. And so we start with first flower. You can do what I do or you can do something different. Remember that my practices are meant to 
be flexible. You need to adjust them and respect your personality and skill level. It's a beautiful way also to practice different type of flowers that we can include in other design. Maybe sometimes so when you paint with me watercolors, you can include the, some of these flowers. You can go back and look into your journal if you're working in a journal or just go and look in the folder because remember that you're going to keep all of these, right? You're going to include a little pattern inside the leaves. What I really like about these practices is that they are not like a extremely difficult or intimidating, but they give us a beautiful opportunity not only to relax and focus, but also to train our fine model skills that will help us to produce good quality of lines that you will need for any type of design and drawing that you want to create, right? The good quality, the good craftsmanship, it is important. Now, you're going to alternate and do some leaves. So we kind of deconstruct, instead to add the stem with the leaves attached to the flower, we deconstructed the design in the space that we have available. This is a wonderful opportunity also to learn about space, the use of it, and positive and negative space so when we color. I make my students do several exercises about positive and negative spaces. For some people, it's very intuitive. For some other, it is not. So as I teach my students, I make sure that I give everybody, regardless of their personal talent or their personal skill level, the same strong foundation so they can really master a concept and become like really aware of what they are doing. And so in this way, they uh, are able to make choices when they create their own artworks. Now we are going to exercise curved line in creating another type of flower. And of course, when it is time to color, you just do you, you know. You can follow my palette, you can choose something different, you can choose your favorite colors, you can decide to work only with tertiary color or only with secondary color. Make your experiment, right? We're going to create now a frame around these flowers, including simple leaves to fulfill the rest of the space that we have available. We can add. We're going to do the black today and then we're going to color over it because being a, a permanent markers, they want to move once we color on top of the black. And we are not going to use any water, so they are not going to blend at all. But just in case you're not using permanent markers and you're using washable marker, it's totally fine. We might, you know, you might have um, some blending happening when you will color on top. But if you're using, let's say, a Sharpie right now to do the black, you're going to be absolutely fine. The Sharpie should not uh, move when you color in the spaces. There we go. Now we go for another one. This time we're going to build it up in the center. I'm going to inspire myself with some flowers. Of course, not a realistic uh, version of it. 
but a patterned one. Now we are exercising circles. Bigger and smaller. We feel the gaps between the circles with the black. Patiently. And now we do a different type of petals, similar to the leaves, so similar type of lines. You make the petals touch the edge of the space that you have available. And now we include the petal between the first line that we create. And once again, we're going to add a pattern. And I will leave the pattern only on the first circle and not on, on the leaves. Now we are going to fill this space with a beautiful big leaf that will occupy the space almost entirely. Then I'm going to do the lines inside to prep the pattern that I want to have in my leaves. And once again, if you want to do something a little different, just do so. What it is important is that you learn how to use the space that you have available to create something that is balanced and to play with positive and negative spaces, right? When it's time to color and make your choices. And we're gonna do the same over here. Is that that these two leaves belong to these flowers and they are surrounding him, creating a beautiful visual frame to it. And actually an excellent uh, symmetric balance to our piece. Understanding art principles such as balance and harmony through the correct use of the element is not an easy task. It depends, of course, on our personal skills and vocations. For some of us, it's more intuitive. For some of us, it's not. I see it every day with my students. For some students or beginner artists, it's extremely difficult to fulfill the space. But... Um, it is something that we can train and it is important to train yourself. Now we are doing some nice like uh, generic flowers, smaller. So we have these two, they're pretty big, medium size, medium size. So we have some variety as well. As I was saying, it is very important to create opportunity in the practice to understand the principle, because the principle of art are uh, abstract concept, right? When we have like, um, for example, I'm going to do beautiful round big leaves this time. For example, 
lines, we can see them, right? Um, colors, we can see them, right? Space, shapes, forms. So all the elements are visible. They are concrete pro uh, um, object. I want to say like, you know, we can observe them. But when we talk about <clears throat> balance, harmony, right? Uh, what else? Emphasis, rhythm, movement, right? They can mean many, many things because they are indeed abstract. This time we're going to create a nice like vertical leaves so that almost look like uh, the stem for this flower, but it's not, but still will dry the eyes and the attention to the main uh, central point of our design. So the The principle, as I was saying, are abstract concept and mostly for young artists and young humans, it's difficult to understand abstract concept because we need to be able to visualize this concept somehow. This is a wonderful, this type of practice are wonderful opportunity to understand how a, like balance can look like. Balance through symmetry, for example, in this case, they can you can understand also what harmony, right? A piece that is cohesive, that show the same type of design. It creates that cohesiveness that we want. And so that cohesiveness will give a harmony to the piece. It will bring a unity. Some other times, instead, through this type of uh, pattern, pattern and practice, uh, we can understand what contrast is, what lack of a symmetry means, and how can we create a beautiful and visually effective piece using the element, such as line, colors, so space, and shape, and etc., in a different way. Now, one more flower. We're going to do it this time probably coming from the bottom. I would say that I will start here. I will black the center already. And then I will build tiny, tiny petal this time. Pretend that you're doing a scales. And then of course our petal will go larger and larger and larger. Try to make the new petals as large as possible so they fell in the center of the previous one. More here and here. And I will leave this space available for some nice coloring. And now you're going to have fun and you're going to choose all of the colors that you would like to. I'm going to choose a palette that I usually don't. I'm not a very strong uh, pink person. So today I want to really make the effort of use a different uh, tint and tones of pink and see if I can like the colors a little more. Sometimes uh, this is how I choose my color. Colors that, that I usually don't and I wouldn't choose when I produce my own pieces as an artist. I really try my best to incorporate into practice because we can build a relationship with the colors, right? And maybe we can figure out a way to best incorporate the color in our future practice. Or if we really don't like it, it's going to be a confirmation that that color is really not for us and it is totally fine. Also, sometimes I'm definitely used to play with cold and warm palette. Um, and so I know what type of feeling I get out of those, right? But when it comes to less familiar colors, so colors that I don't use that much, sometimes this is the perfect opportunity when I practice with you in my journal to see if I, what is the feeling that I get at the end when I look at the piece 
once it's completely colored with these colors that I usually don't use. And sometimes I might be really positively surprised. So I suggest you to choose your own color palette. I only, I wish that it was possible for you when you send me your comments to add the picture and publish like what you did, just because I'm so curious to see how your creative mind works and what the color, what are the colors that you choose for the same practice, right? So I really, really encourage you to set yourself free, experiment with color. And even if at the end, some of the color that you use that don't look so great together to you and they don't give you the feeling that you were hoping for, you this, that is a visual note out there. That is a note as a reference that when you will do something similar in the future, you will make a different choices based on the data that you collected. This is why I insist that the process is more important than the final product. Mostly when we are learning, uh, when we want to like build our skill and also learn about our creativity. What is our style? Some people know it already. I see that, for example, some of my students have a very, very clear style already. You can definitely tell. Some other instead... Uh, take a longer time to find out who they are as artists, to make their own choices. I will have students who say, can I copy your example? And I say, of course you can, if you think that that is an important practice for you. And then in the future, you will be able to make your choices as well, right? So I let them, of course, feel welcome to... Uh, copy what I'm doing because maybe in that moment, if you're not ready to make your own choices, it's totally fine. But then I also encourage them to always uh, um, make choices and try something different. Now we're going to have fun with some green. And once again, you don't have to color your leaves green. This is an abstract pattern. So it's not a realistic representation of what uh, nature leaves and real flower looks like. So if you want to use purple, go ahead and do so. You can really create a monochromatic piece or you can create a colorful piece. just to make sure like a monochromatic piece is a piece that is based on tint, tones and shade of the same color. Colorful piece instead is a piece that explore uh, a variety of colors included in the color wheel. Oopsie, there we go my green. And also sometimes the choice of the color depends on what we have available, right? And I want everybody to participate into my practices with the material that you have. Then if you think that these practices are something important to you, you might go ahead and buy some new supplies and create your little set of art supplies for you. So you have them all ready when it's time to practice with me once per week or even more. But we can definitely create a very good quality art even with scholastic supplies. And we can definitely enjoy the experience at the same time because we are focusing on the experience itself. Then we have fun in drawing and coloring together, that you're learning new things or you're reinforcing some of your knowledge. So now for these leaves, we're going to choose the one. I will choose one green and definitely very different from the ones that I picked for the next door drawing.
as you notice, the black marker doesn't really uh, go anywhere, doesn't blend because uh, it was a permanent marker. So there is no risk that it blends with other markers. Now, if you have been using a fine Crayola markers for this product, you can do it. Of course, the black might bleed a little bit into the colors, but if you don't add too much pressure, it should be totally fine. Remember, when you color, you want to make sure that you stay inside the space. If little accident happen, it's not a big deal because at the end, where everything will be colorful, you barely, you will barely notice. Um, but it's a good exercise, right? To learn how to stay inside the space, to control the hand and the strokes, which is the movement that we do with the markers. In this case, when you're painting, is the movement that you do with the brush. Let's see. Ooh, this pink looks really, really hot. And still, I don't think that pink is for me, but this is what I decided to try today, and so I'm committed now to use as many pink as possible. And if you don't have so many options with colors, with the markers, remember that you can overlap the markers, right, to create another tone. So they won't blend, of course, as well as the watercolors or oil pastels or other media will blend. But still, going over with a, a yellow, for example, on top of a pink will give you definitely some sort of a um, reaction. So you will have a, like a warmer a pink that will give some uh, peach uh, uh, tones as well. You can go with the uh, red on top of the pink, so you can still experiment and create some more tertiary colors. Just uh, remember that Markers can be aggressive on the paper, so according to the quality of the paper that you're using, if you scrub too much or if you overlap too many times on top of the same spot, you might break the paper. Mostly if you're using just regular paper on a thinner mix and media paper. If you have a good mix and media journal like the one that I'm using or a mix and media paper, you should be fine. So just like, you know, touch the paper. That is how, if you're not experienced, like even when a student, I, I teach them to touch the paper, how that paper feel. Does it feel thick? Does it feel, you know, so they can make uh, uh, choices about the media and the way that they use the media accordingly. Now, let's add some fun with these leaves i'm gonna do the outlines and then since these are big i'm gonna switch to my thicker tip on the other side so if you have dual tip markers they are extremely convenient so if you have to make a choice when you buy your permanent markers make sure that you have a very good selection selection of different colors so you can have much more fun and then that they are dual like a tip markers because look you can do something quicker better and you also learn coloring skills right a little better so with this the small tip, you can do the outlines and you can color smaller spaces So when you have to be extremely precise, right? But then the big tip will allow you to cover bigger spaces in no time.
they create a very smooth and cohesive uh, um, surface as well. Now, let's go. Very dark indeed on the other side to create a beautiful contrast. And visual interest. And now we switch. And always very carefully if you're using a big tip. You go slow, mostly around the edges. You want to make sure that you stay inside the space that you decided. And if tiny little accidents happen, we can always fix them. And I use the same one since I have it already to do the inside of these leaves because I want to have the inside much darker than the outside. So I really like this deep green. I'm using, of course, this thin tip. If you need to take a break, you can take a break, pause in the video, and then resume the video with me. If you need to go slower, go slower. If you're faster, go faster. If you want to add the more detail at the end, feel free to do that as well. Now I'm going to proceed with a very bright green. Once again, to create a nice visual contrast, right? That will actually capture the eyes of the viewer. We want our pieces to be interesting, to show variety. In this case, also a rhythm and movement because it's a pattern and piece, right? And if this one is uh, your first uh, practice with me, I really highly encourage you to go in my website, in my, sorry, YouTube channel, you will see a library called like Mindful Practices and practices that I did with affirmation at the beginning of the year. I did two months of uh, positive affirmations and art practices because I thought that was a beautiful way to start the new year together. And those practices are all based on geometric and organic patterns, repetitions, and focus on the element of art, such as lines, color, texture, implied texture, of course, patterns, space, rhythm, and movement, right, as a principle. So that it's also a very good practice that you can go back and do to have even a better idea of what we are doing together. And now, this one is going to be our sunflower inspired. So for this one, I'm not going to use a pink palette, but more of an orange, yellow, blue, brown. And 
and this will actually make these flowers very different from the rest, not only by the shapes and its position, which is central, but also about a very specific color palette that I'm not repeating in any other flower. So you don't have to do the same that I'm doing, but I invite you to use a, a very different color palette from the central design to create a focal point, this is how we call it, an emphasis on one element more than other. So you see how many principles of art and design we can review and understand better with this practice. There is so much power and potential in patterned practices because they help us with repetition of simple element to really, really understand the principle behind it. Without even considering that they are amazing experiment that you can do, right? With no stress, no worries about the result. We are going to experiment and see and learn and collect data, which in our case, it means that we create something and we observe. If you want to add the notes with the pencil on the back, as I let my students do, do so. Or you take mental notes of what worked well, what didn't, what you want to change, or what do you want to do different or just simply analyzing all the elements that you see in your piece and the structure of it as well. This is how you build knowledge and building knowledge, you build confidence, right? Because you know what you're doing. You make a purpose, uh, I don't know, not this today. I'm not for saying purposely. I don't know. It's a word that doesn't come natural to me. But you will make choices. You won't just have things happening. Now let's go with a nice brown to fulfill these circles. Nice. This is definitely a palette that resonates with me more. The one maybe yours is this one instead. And I don't know you, but I love the sound of a marker on paper. Beautiful. Now let's keep going. We go back to our pinkish sort of palette. Mm, very hot as well. I probably never used these colors before. This one, I kind of like it more than uh, that one, for example, just because that is like a, uh, an orange reddish tone in it. The psychology of colors, it is, it is very interesting, right? Since colors really evoke and enhance emotions, they can really trigger us, you know, our memories, our feelings. They can provoke reactions. It's unbelievable, like how deep the effect of colors goes on us. And there is a, a whole branch of psychology, say, psychology that studies colors and the emotion of colors. 
and it is a deviation branch of psychology. So don't think that it's something modern. It is indeed something that was done really hundreds of years ago, even more. Young, for example, a famous psychologist and psychiatric was really, really, really into the color theory. Um, and uh, you did many researches about how color can affect us and how color can be used to help us to deal and cope with some uh, situation. Oh, I just noticed that I forgot a few lines here in these petals, and there we go. Done. Now we're going to choose a pretty, too pretty pink, like a green. I'm going to reuse this one to kind of a, a create a connection. So when we repeat the same colors in different spots of our design, we create a connection, right? Because the eyes of the viewer we recognize the same colors and will connect. Goethe was a writer and a sort of a philosopher, and he also studied the colors very well. And according to his theory, the theory that he created after studying the psychology of colors and the emotions related to colors, he say, he believed that when we are surrounded by very, very warm colors, right, like this one, for example, for balancing that feeling, we create inside our mind, our soul, call the colors to create a nice harmonic balance. And so we feel serene and happy. And then on the contrary, when we are surrounded by cool color palette, such like all the tones of blues or green, we develop inside, by compensation, warm colors. So we feel embraced and warm and energized. So it's basically a little bit of the opposite of the traditional uh, color wheel, uh, color theory. Okay, let's start with our last flowers. I will still repeat the pinkish palette because I will have these four corners that will frame and then the balance with the green, focal point, symmetry, vertical the points here and the only palette that is different to really help to emphasize that central design that it is the focal point for me. I'm not overthinking the type of pink that I'm using, pink, violet, whatever I have available. I just pick in the colors that are here, so I'm not going in a specific order like lighter, darker, or whatever. I think that at this point, my eyes are so too much pink already. Definitely this one for me probably is the hardest pink to handle. Ah, you know, it hurts my eyes a little bit, but it's okay. I am doing my, I'm making an effort. I want to include it and embrace it in a design. Maybe for some of you, it's really like a, the favorite color. So you're enjoying it. 
so much. Eh? If that is the case, good for you. But honestly, looking back at all the <clears throat> design that I did with you, and they are all included in this journal, I uh, realized that I never, almost never used pink at all. And I say, well, today is the day that I will experiment with pink and see if I like it or not. <laughs> I like to use the technique of the winner could turn lines and then working inside a space. It's just like something that I teach also to my student to reframe the space. So your eyes are all focused on the inside and it's easy for you to stay inside the space, avoid mistakes that sometimes, you know, they can happen. If we are a little distracted, we end up to color something that we were not supposed to color with the color. So framing the space definitely help us probably this one it's a little tricky it should not be the same color but it's fine i'm going to use this one again choose a darker less bright so it's gonna kind of you know Turn this down a little bit. Definitely alternating something that is a little more dull with something that is very, very bright is going to help us. More. And now let's see, maybe this one, beautiful, intense. Let's make sure that you always fill all the gaps. So the coloring looks neat. Now, you can decide to leave the background white, but I want to color these lines in between to really enhance and frame it again. Now, it's going to be like, uh, I will probably use neutral warmth because I want to support the warmth of this design. So probably I will use these two colors to frame so one side of the frame will be this nice dark dark yellow almost actually a light brown a light burnt sienna carefully you stay one side of the frame now you can try something completely different and you can try to incorporate a blue for example which depending on what you've chosen right so if you have the same palette that i am that i have you can try something similar to what i'm doing or if you use a completely different palette you can try something a little different let's see And Sienna, there we go. I also found out that actually I don't use 
Sony Brown and it's actually a very, I'm reconsidering the color. I remember as a child, I never wanted to use brown unless it was necessary because I was coloring a landscape or something that is naturally brown, right? So as a kid, we try to be leader, you know, to represent whatever using the colors that are the literal color of the thing, like. But honestly, when doing a pattern or abstract design, I never include the brown so much, which I should instead. It's such a pity, right? So I'm going to go ahead and alternate these. And then I want to touch the background, which is the negative space inside each one of the Let's call them squares, even though they are not perfect squares. But it is your choice if you want to color it. If you do so, you need to be extremely careful because you have to look at all the colors that you already use. So you're not going to repeat, right? Something that is not taking over the design. You want something that will embrace the design and completely without eliminating the emphasis on this beautiful element inspired by the nature that we create, right? So if you have a too intense or too dark, too bright background, you risk to unbalance all the design. So maybe something neutral, something nice and soft, it's probably the best decision. And we're going to do this last one with the brown and then complete the other one with the light burn sienna. Fill the gaps. I know that you are feeling also tired. We have been coloring a lot. If you need to take a break, take a break. But don't rush it through because we are almost at the end that you created. For I know for sure that you created a wonderful design. And so we want to make sure that we take a very good care of it, right? And we take our time, dedication and attention to complete the final details, right? Sometimes I see that is a struggle because we're always so like we live a, such a fast paced life. And I see that some for my students, for some of my students, for example, it's always difficult at the end they want to rush and then they end up ruining the design. And they end up not to be so happy because they know that they could have done something different and more or just be a little more careful, please don't do that mistake. Take a break. You don't have to finish it today if you don't want to. Nobody's rushing you. This is the time that you deliberately choose to dedicate to art to practice and to practice and to yourself. So treat yourself and treat whatever you create with care and with attention. And exercise your patience, your persistence, resilience, consistency, right? That you want to see through something that you start because we always finish what we start. This is another great, great life lesson that comes with art. At least for me with my students, I give them time. If I need to give them more time, I will do so. But I say one of my few rules is that we always finish what we start. We do our best, we adjust it, we fix it, and we keep it. Even when we're not happy about the result, we add the notes on the back of what didn't go well or what we don't like and what we want to do, do differently another time.
but there is no Lyco. I throw it away and I start it over. No, we don't do that. We avoid it as much as possible. And I can tell you that you can see the results and the improvement because I see it every day with my students. done this is my design and i will leave it white because i want the color okay guys so we did it and this is the beautiful design that we created together your might look different than mine different color palettes i hope that you really enjoy and remember these practice are fantastic a fantastic way for beginner intermediate and even advanced just for like for us to really work and understand better the principle of art and design there are very abstract concepts and to kind of visualize them and understand and how we can use the art elements such as lines, patterns, shapes, space, etc., to reinforce those principles of art and design and to really um, emphasize what we want to emphasize, create focal point, create balance, harmony through symmetry or not symmetry, through contrast or harmony. So it is really, really wonderful. If you like this practice, please make sure that you click on the like button, subscribe to my channel, and once again, maybe click on the notification so you will be notified um, every time that I publish a new video. I usually have a Monday uh, publication. So every Monday I come up with a new practice and video. And if you're new, once again, feel free to go back and practice with my uh, previous practices. I wish you all a fantastic day and I see you next week. Ciao a tutti!